Hi, I'm Angela Martin and welcome to another episode of Digicast. Now in this episode we'll be looking at how we can add as well as edit media objects within a keynote presentation. Now I'll go back to my DigiK presentation within my keynote application. Now looking at my DigiK presentation, I can see that I can further enhance the presentation with the use of media objects such as adding in images, movies as well as music. Now to start off adding in my images, which I can do with adding in the images of each of my executive staff members within my executive staff slide. Now to do that, I can first change my executive staff slide master, which in my case is now under the title as well as bullet point placeholder slide master by selecting the slide in my sidebar first and going into my format inspector, which will give me my slide layout and as indicated, title and bullet master. So I'll change this master by clicking on the change master button, which will then take me into my various master slides. And the master that I want to select is the one that's got a image placeholder, which in my case is the title, bullet, as well as image placeholder, slide master. And there I'll see that my slide orientation have now changed as it now contains my image placeholder. So as we can see, a few cosmetic changes have taken place from the previous master that was used due to the fact that our image placeholder has been now included within this particular slide. However, we can change certain things within our slide. Like I mentioned, I would like to have the images of each of my executive staff members and I'll do that by making this placeholder smaller as well as making different copies of this image placeholder for each of my executive staff members. Now, as I've now selected the placeholder, which shows the handles on the image placeholder, I can now click and hold. I use the corner so that I can keep the orientation of the placeholder and I'll drag it down. And as I can see, as I'm dragging it down, it shows me the width point as well as the height point size. So I will make the height up to a hundred point and I'll drag it down and there I've got a hundred point and I'll move this placeholder further up to the slide just as a temporary space for now. And then I'll select my bullet placeholder. As I can see, my bullet placeholder has become a little bit smaller. So I can stretch it out to again have it the same as I had it in the previous slide. Also, I can see that the spacing have become less between each of the bullets. So I'll go to my text tab button within my format inspector while my bullet placeholder is selected. And I'll just change the spacing not to single, but to double. So there I've got my spacing in place and I can just move that a little bit more higher. And there I've got my bullet placeholder as I had it in the previous slide master. Also, I will move the image. As I can see, I can use my ruler at the top as a guide and I'll move it on the 800 point indicated on my ruler and I'll just move it in line with my bullet point. So then I have my first one as my placeholder is still selected. I can now make a duplicate of that placeholder by going to my edit menu item and within my edit menu item, I can go to duplicate selection, which is the image placeholder. And I just click on that one. I can also use the shortcut key, which is command and D. However, I'll first click on the duplicate selection, which will then make a duplicate of that placeholder. And I'll just drag it down to my second one. As I can see, it snaps to the right spacing in between as the Keynote has another function which helps with lining images, as I can see with that yellow line, as well as snapping to the correct spacing. Next up, I will make additional duplicates of that placeholder by using the shortcut key this time around, holding down command and pressing D twice to add in the other two. And then I'll drag the other two also in place. Keep in mind, I don't need to play it by eye. I can just move it as my guides will then put it into the correct order with the spacing. I can now start adding in my images. Within my image placeholders, I can click on this button, 
which will then take me directly into my photos library, which is the same photos library contained within my photos application. So now I can go straight into the library without even leaving my keynote application which just make the integration part much easier. So now that I'm within my library, I can now go into any of my albums. I've got an album prepared, which is called DigiCape, which contains the headshots of all my executive staff members. So they are choose Robin Olafir, and they are see it puts it in without changing the size or anything. It just puts it into that specific order. I can do the same with all of my other executive staff members with using the same principle. So now that we have put in all of our images, we will see that there's a slight difference within all the images as we can look at Gaynor MacArthur's image that it is a group image. However, she's contained within that image. Now the whole purpose of this exercise is to show that we can crop people within an image to show it as a headshot, even though it was taken within a group. So if I double click on this placeholder, which will then show me the entire image, I'll see that it brings about another tool, which is called my edit mask. Now my edit mask allows me to do further on editing to that image. In other words, I can make my placeholder a little bit smaller. I can also zoom into the image within my placeholder. Now for me to, to show specific people within that image, I can select the image selector, which will then change from changing the size of my placeholder to the image. So I'll stretch my image out and then I can move the part of the image which shows Gainomic Arthur and I can click on the done key. So there I've got the headshot of Gaynor MacArthur as with all of my other executive staff members. Also, I can take out certain parts of the background within an image. For instance, if I now decide I only want to have a headshot and I remove all of the background, let's take Mark's image here. We can then select Mark Parsons and this will give me the option to select the alpha tool. Now clicking on the alpha tool, uh, which will bring about the message box saying, clicking a color to make it transparent or drag to make similar colors transparent. So as I can see, the entire image is got a off white or cream color. And I can then move my mouse pointer over that particular color, which is the color that I want to remove. When I click on that color, and I drag my mouse pointer upwards, it will slowly remove all of that similar color within that image. Now if I release, I see that I only have the image of Mark, which will then have removed all the background. I can also then click on that image and then further put a shadow, which will give it a nice effect. And I can change the backdrop of that image by changing the shadow. And there I've got a nice, image of Mark's face with a nice background drop shadow behind it. So these are the options in terms of editing images within our keynote presentation. So using the same process of adding in my photos into the presentation, I can use with adding in movies as well. Now to show this example, I'll add in a movie clip on a new slide at the end of my presentation. And doing this, I'll first go to my last slide in my presentation and I'll click on the add slide button and I'll select the slide that contains the image placeholder only. Now after adding in my last slide, I can click on the insert button in my image placeholder, which will then take me into my photos library containing my photos under my photos tab, as well as my movies under my movies tab. Now within my movies tab, I can select the movie clip that I want to insert which in my case, I want to select the last movie clip and this will then insert that movie clip into my slide. Now, if I look at my slide in general, compared to the other slides, I can see that it looks quite different in terms of its cosmetics. Now, I would like the slide to look slightly different, but also have some connection to my presentation. Thus, I'm going to add in the footer into the slide only. So for me to do that, seeing that I've got my footer contained within my photos library, I can access my photos library outside the use of a 
image placeholder by going to my media button within my toolbar. And within my media button, I'll see that I don't only have access to my photos library through my photos tab button and my movies tab button, but I also have access to my music library through my music tab button, which is the same library contained within iTunes. So if I go into my photos library, into my photos tab, and I select the footer, it will then add that into my slide and I can just center it with the use of my guide and I can drag it down to the bottom of my slide. So there I've got my footer in place with my movie clip and I can now start editing my movie clip by clicking on the movie clip and then under my format inspector under the movies tab button I can set the volume of the movie so if I play it So there I've got my volume of my movie set and now I can start editing my movie so I can set the start of my movie clip. I don't want it to start at a black screen so I'll scroll it up to start with the closed doors of the store and I can click on the last slider and then specify the length of the movie and I want this movie to end at that point. Now I can also set the poster frame. Now the poster frame is the frame that's going to be shown when we select the slide containing the movie. So the poster frame I want to select is at the end of the movie clip uh, which contains the logo as well as the name of the company. Now I've got the frame that will identify what we're going to be looking at when we come to that slide. So now if I go into my previous slide and I hit my play button and I go into my slide containing the movie, there I can see my poster frame. And if I hit my space bar on my keyboard, it will then start playing that movie from our beginning frame, which we set in our trim. And it will play through right to the end of that trim that we set. So now we can see how we can add as well as edit our movie directly in Keynote without even going into an outside editor. Now when it comes to adding in music into our presentation we've got two options either with adding a sound clip for a single slide or for the entire presentation. So now to add in a sound clip for a single slide let's say we're adding it into our second slide I can then click on my media button again and within my media button, I'll go to my music tab button this time. And I'll select that sound clip contained within my music library. So if I click, it will add it in. And it will show with this blue icon. This is our sound clip that's been added. So I'll just move it there so we can have a better look at it. And now I can play the sound clip. And as we can hear, it's pretty loud, so we can turn down the volume. And now... So now that we have set our volume, we can also specify from which level we must play it from to which level we want to play it to. As well as I can set to loop it within the slide. Now, if I want to remove the sound clip, from my slide, I can click on it and just hit the backspace, which will then remove that sound clip from that slide. If we want to add in a sound clip to the entire presentation, we can go to our document inspector. And within our document inspector, we can go into our audio tab button. And within our audio tab button, I can then click on the add soundtrack button, which will then take me into my iTunes library or my music library and I can then click on that sound clip. Now that I've added in the sound clip, it will then play throughout my entire presentation. The same I can do with a sound clip which is outside of my music library. I'm just going to click on that sound clip and backspace it to remove it. I can go into my downloads folder and if I click and I drag it, I can drag it within my box and it will also add it into that soundtrack box as well. So now that I've got my soundtrack added, I can have the option to play it once or even loop it or even turn it off. If I set it to loop, it will loop throughout my presentation and irrespective if 
it comes to the end of my presentation, it will still play through. Now, when it comes to playing once, the sound clip will play once in terms of the length of the sound clip. And if I have additional slides left after the length of the sound clip, it will stop there and still continue playing the presentation. It will not match up the length of the presentation to the length of the song. So if we set it to play the sound, hit the play button, we will see that it will play throughout the presentation, even if I jumping from one slide to the next. So these are the options that we have in adding in our photos, movies, music, as well as the editing features within those media options. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Digicast with me, Angela Martin. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and goodbye.